Welcome to today's session of IIQ Power Chats. In today's session, we have with us uh, Harsha Chuk. Harsha has been working as a risk manager. She has worked with uh, three asset management companies till that. Harsha uh, recently was uh, heading the risk management uh, function of uh, Tata Pension Management Limited, where she was working as like chief risk manager, chief risk officer. Welcome to the show, Harsha. Thank you, Nagesh, for having me. Thank you so much for joining. So first, we would like to hear from you about your professional journey and also how uh, this calling as a risk professional came. Uh, so Nitesh, uh, I am a chartered accountant uh, by right. qualification followed by a qualified CETA because I had a bent towards IT since my CA days. Right. Uh, to begin my career, I started working as uh, in a consultant space with okay. uh, into risk advisory. That's how my journey as a risk professional started. Right. Post that, I got a chance into the asset management space, which was more of a campus placed uh, opportunity with me uh, at IDB Asset Management. Okay. So from there on, my risk management journey began and majorly into investment risk management because asset management is all about investments. So Correct. that is how it is. Wonderful. All right. So uh, we would also like to know, and uh, everyone has a maxim. So what is the quote that you live by? Uh, I would say uh, give without remembering and uh, you know receive without forgetting that wow. is how I believe in I believe in the power of giving so yes if you can kindly explain the two terms risk probability and risk in impact uh, so coming to risk probability Nitish right. uh, in simpler terms if I want to explain it it's just the chance of a risk getting materialized or happening uh, let's say chance of having a loss chance of fire breaking out in an office right uh, something like that so it's just a chance of uh, what percentage chances of it is happening uh, coming to risk impact is if that risk happens so how much loss it creates to you how much would it cost you now cost could not just be in financial terms it could be non-financial as right. well the company's reputation is yes. at stake so me coming from an investment background will talk about let's say a someone we found out was uh, you know doing a front running in the dealing space. Yeah. That's a very big risk. Of course it has got financial penalties etc etc. But setting that aside more is the reputation risk of Absolutely. the company at loss. Absolutely. So yes risk impact is something what it will cost you if that event happens. What are the different risk uh, or other broad risk categories or verticals in an investment management company? Nitish, uh, as you said, investment management company, the first and foremost category will be investment risk itself. Absolutely. That takes away, let's say, about 60 to 70 percent of your uh, entire risk management within an investment management firm. Right. Apart from that, it will be operational risk, yes. uh, which is not just only for an investment management company, but it will be universal uh, by Correct. its nature. Third will be technology or cyber risk, right. uh, as you name it as. Uh, fourth could be uh, corporate security, right. but uh, that is, you know, not all companies uh, follow, so it is kind of subjective, but yes, even that is a separate area of risk that is looked into by many asset managers right. or otherwise other companies as well. So, yeah. and how do you explain the risk to different stakeholders? Now that's uh, honestly a tricky part, yeah. I would say. Uh, so for people who you know don't understand the qualitative aspects or who are yeah. just number driven let's say fund managers, right. portfolio managers, traders, so you show them numbers like quantify, yeah. show them the threshold that you know this particular uh, risk or you cannot, uh, this is a performance risk you have to you know maintain this level of performance right. so you don't have to breach this number, this figure. And then you show them what figures it, it is coming, how it is coming, etc. Right. And apart from that, you can have, you know, one-to-one -one sessions with the, uh, you know, head of the functions, whoever uh, functions risk pertain to. You can escalate matters to, or you rather should escalate matters to whichever forums uh, you get the chance, whether it's investment committee, there's risk committee, yes. there are board level committees. Correct. So there also to the top people, if you try and put your points, that's how even to the lower ends who are there, it gets piled on or explained in a manner. Then uh, there are so many risk functions. So who primarily uh, does the risk assessment in your team? Uh, so primarily it is the chief risk officer right. and I am the support there uh, with him along with the various stakeholders whose function, uh, functional risks we are looking at. Uh, but you know going on an advanced level 
there are consultants out there erm consultants as we call them as risk consultants we call them as uh, you know we can take their help as well because in one of my past organizations we actually took help of an erm as we call that enterprise risk right. management consultant and their expert guidance is where we took because it's a very detailed exercise the okay. word looks very simple risk assessment but it's uh, trust me it's a very detailed exercise and it takes Absolutely. about 2 uh, months maybe to very okay. i mean to begin with a uh, very minimum uh, time as i'm saying conservatively it will at least take that much so yes how do you enhance the risk management process uh i think first and foremost important thing here by enhancing your risk management process is creating awareness right. is creating a risk Culture, culture in your organization uh, first and foremost thing every person should understand they should not just look at risk is also one of the functions which is needed uh, okay. you know you just have to oblige by them just like usual so that's not something so you need to create that awareness that sense of responsibility uh, in people the people who are responsible for it um to enable this there is something called as risk champions okay. uh, you know this is a concept which many of the organizations even uh, you know investment management companies do follow that every function they will you know designate somebody uh, this is not a formal designation but designate somebody or give the responsibility of somebody being a risk champion for the team correct so let's say a uh, operations team or an invest uh, finance team will right. have a risk champion who will look after the risks and then will do the necessary reporting to risk management function to board etc he will be someone who will be proactive instead of the head of the function being involved in so many other activities yeah somebody else will kind of assist him or be more proactive if it's required uh, so yes this is you know one of the ways how would you enhance your risk management processes yeah okay uh, so going to the next question uh, would be like how do you how do you reduce errors in work I mean, I know that's like not only risk management. That's a general question, okay. but like a very important question, particularly for people who are just starting out. Sure. Uh, I would just uh, mention two things over here sure. for this, uh, or which are coming to the top of my mind. One is automation. Okay. Wherever possible, now that we are in a space where technology has grown so far, every most of the things can be automated. Correct. So wherever there is, uh, you know, no need of a human mind or analytic uh, kind of thing coming in, which are monotonous or mechanical, and uh, you can set algorithms or not even algorithms, not even let's not even go that far. You know, at your core basic IT level also there are some SQLs or something that you can always right. work upon and create. So automation is one thing uh, where you should look into wherever possible uh, for the mechanical tasks etc. Second thing is having a make or checker, as in dual uh, thing. That's the very core basic objective of a risk management, right. as we all know. Having a make or a checker, someone doing it and someone having a second eye to it. So let us uh, take my example as a risk manager. When I used to work or I used to analyze something. uh my mentor would always have a second eye at it right and it's not it's not necessary that you know junior's work is looked by a senior vice versa also Correct. on certain strategic policies my boss is working he would tell me harsha please have a second eye to it yes so that if something he has missed out then i will not boast but yes there have been things which i you know maybe smaller things which even i pointed out ke uh, you know uh, so this is what just got missed So that is how it helps. Yeah, make a absolutely. Check, having a make or checker. Uh, okay. How a risk manager should uh, stay abreast with the latest developments in the industry? Uh, okay. To begin with, I right. would say reading, because reading always helps, and not just reading uh, locally or domestically, but even on global fronts. Correct. Uh, to give a small example yes. here, when COVID was hitting China in December and January, it was spreading. Uh, we a risk management function at uh, Tata. We were kind of uh, you know being proactive and actually setting up things uh, to enable virtual working or work from home kind of scenario at that time itself. Oh, okay. Uh, so luckily we were the ones who were kind of pretty much prepared and it didn't come as a surprise to us. Right. At least the major things were covered already by us. The major functions were taken care right. of. already by us so the business didn't get majorly hampered or impacted uh, so yes reading not just locally but on global fronts 
uh, there are various seminars or conferences which various forums nsc keeps there is something called as ubs forums if i'm not sure if people would be knowing but they are also keeping various sessions on risk management and there are various other forums will keep having risk management webinars or sessions so you i need to you know attend them Correct. and more so talk to industry people you know become more interactive that really helps what do you think are uh, the most challenging part of the job as a risk manager uh, most challenging is understanding or knowing about emerging risks okay now, risk is not something which you identified and only this would be the set of routine risks which we have to look into right there is something risk as i all keep saying is dynamic correct so it has emerging risks uh, again the example the best example to this could be covid nobody knew nobody knew that this could be uh, something so this is an emerging risk and kitna bhi you know you try but it's not always that will be perfect in predicting such emerging risk or no that's why the term itself is emerging so this is the most uh, challenging part i would say uh, when it comes to risk management right so a uh, follow up question on that would be that uh, what is one major challenge that you have faced in your career and how you have dealt with it uh okay i link this back to one of the you know questions uh, i answered earlier where i said ki risk was not given that much of an importance it's not a specialized function yes. so again in my career i faced this problem quite a lot that risk was seen as a dumping function kuch if anything extra is coming you know just tell risk what a job do they have just tell them they'll do it uh so there was a scenario where i was being told that apart from risk management please handle a product function as well please oh. look after the things of product development now this was uh, you know surprising and uh, i said i mean i had to actually talk to the ceo directly about this because it was coming from him i clearly told him i explained him very politely that this cannot be done you cannot just mix two different functions uh, all together had you said risk and compliance i would still understand but risk and products no and risk is a specialized function you just cannot mix it like that um, so obviously that conversation went at advanced levels i i had to clearly put my foot down honestly that's how i dealt with it right matlab there was a point where i could have uh, you know i would have to say no i'm just quitting and going kind of thing yeah but that's how you have to keep your foot down eventually uh, people do understand and now more so they will have to understand but yeah uh, this is i would say one of the major challenges that i faced in my career you know risk, seeing risk as a dumping function and also making people realize that risk is your owners the function Correct. itself the head of the function itself is responsible so if i am head of uh, let's say it i am responsible primarily because it's my function i know how it is happening as right. that way so making that you know understanding putting it in their head and you know any word if they see risk is attached to it they just throw it on risk management no please see what it is so yeah this i would say is has been a major challenge yeah yeah absolutely right i mean i can totally understand where you are coming from because uh, one of the major reasons why iiq was formed actually i mean when way back in like 2000 2004 four five those times right so when we were dealing with lot of very senior people in the industry chief risk officers chief uh, cfos right um, for them risk was just like a number yes i mean in india quant and risk this were like very very little understood i mean yes. so iiq was formed primarily to 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 uh, bring this culture to to explain to people what the importance <laughs> what it is but yeah we have come a long way from there but i can thoroughly understand where where you are coming from what is your view on the importance of training or other proper training on the theoretical as well as the practical or the fundamental aspects of risk management before one enter into the field so of course training is most important nitish why is because as i keep saying risk is not something a routine or a monotonous kind of a job it right. is dynamic it, you need understanding you need to understand the criticality like why are we talking about risk management how does it work you need to understand the critical aspects correct and uh, so let's say coming from an investment background myself i wanted to have a better understanding of investment risk management uh that's where uh, you know i opted for frm as uh, one of uh, you know my uh, sessions to take on 
and yes uh, my personal experience and a genuine suggestion would be iiqf okay. i took up yeah, the quantitative uh, finance uh, you know quantitative risk management program from uh, iiqf so that obviously helped me uh, though i was already on the job i do have a practical exposure but uh, training always helps and is needed uh, time and again so a follow up question would be or the next question would be that uh, what advice would you like to give to people who want to pursue a career in risk management uh, so as i said and as we previously also discussed risk has various types correct so to begin with if someone wants to pursue a career in investment risk as i have uh, i would obviously personally recommend everybody to take up the frm examination uh, which is offered by the you know relevant uh, institute uh, so that one needs to take up and then uh, respectively if someone wants to get into it risk so uh, cisa qualification right. followed by other qualifications would be necessary so on and so forth someone into credit risk would want to take up a credit risk management program so that's how we will uh, i would sum it up sure and like final question would be any uh, particular book or books that you would uh, want to recommend as reading materials uh, for people who want to work or are already working in this industry of risk management uh no so honestly risk being a wider subject there is no book on it uh i would just say uh, let's say let's go academically so right. uh, you know frm pe jo bhi materials whatever are available by the institute by iiqf by other uh, you know authors or institutes uh, one should uh, you know look at that and one should look at certain research papers or articles around it uh but no specific book on risk management honestly because it's such a wide domain you will not have uh, a book written on it so, yeah. wonderful sure so uh with that uh, we would conclude the session today uh thank you so much harsha for sharing all your wonderful insights and thoughts and i'm sure the people who are listening to this uh, they will find all this very very useful with that we'll end the session today keep following us uh, in this space keep following our uh, different social media pages our website uh, where we keep on posting uh, this kind of videos on different different important areas of risk management financial engineering algorithmic trading and machine learning and all other relevant areas thank you so much